What is currently happening programs? Welcome to The Grid, where I'll be bringing you this week's news in VR. It's Friday the 7th of April 2017, and all I can say this week is, the Titans are coming home. We've got Batman Arkham VR, Half-Life 2 VR, the Robo Recall Star Wars mod, Ghost in the Shell VR, Steam sales, and much more. Today, I'm going to cover off the main events to keep you in the loop. So stay locked, crush that like button, enjoy, and welcome to The Grid. What is currently happening YouTube? Facepalm here, your friend in Oz and NZ, bringing you reviews, tutorials, and game clips, minus the shit. You can follow me on Twitter, at Facepalm, with a 1, not an L. As for here on YouTube, if you like what you find, then like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to bring your game face. Let's get it done. There is an ancient saying in the metaverse from eons past that goes, Remember to always be yourself. Unless you can be Batman. Then always be Batman. Well, now you actually can. And by actually, I mean virtually. And by that, I mean virtually real. In Forget it. We've all seen the Batman VR videos from the PS VR release late last year, and this month we'll see an official release on both the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive of Batman Arkham VR. The release date is set for the 25th of April, and Sony lists the experience as running for around 90 minutes, though most actual users have clocked this realistically at about 40 minutes to an hour long. The reviews are actually decent, and it is still listed as one of the top 10 most downloaded PSVR titles to date. Though, take that with a grain of salt, as there is only a little over 100 titles released for the PSVR worldwide at this stage, so top 10 doesn't really guarantee its quality in the grand scale of VR. But with people saying that there is an actual feeling of being Batman when putting on that famous mask, and that the graphics are really nice on the PSVR, and the environments are great to interact with, I'd say that this is a pretty safe bet. And given the PSVR to PC transition, I'm expecting this to be a little sharper and the hand tracking to be a little better than the PSVR version also. So bonus points there, obviously. One thing I definitely do like about Batman VR is that it was only a six month exclusive to PSVR, which is long enough for the console version to get a full run, but then it's still a short enough exclusive exclusivity term that the interest for the content is still there from those waiting for it on PC. In comparison, Resident Evil VR is a 12 month exclusive to the PlayStation, which to me doesn't make a lot of sense because after that initial 6 month period after a game's release, I would imagine that not a lot of additional people are gonna purchase the product at its full price. So to me, it seems more sensible that if a game has to have an exclusivity term attached to it, then six months lets a company strike while the iron is hot on multiple platforms. And Batman VR is a shining example of this, I think. I mean, I was kind of forgetting about it, and then boom, I'm all interested in it again like it had only just come out. But if it were another six months down the track from now, could I say the same thing? Uh, probably not. As far as the game itself is concerned though, we know touch controllers and Vive Wands will be supported, though we don't know whether the experience will be teleport only or onward style locomotion. And even though the price isn't confirmed, given that it's around 20 bucks on the PlayStation Store, I would expect it to land it around that on PC also. At any rate, Batman VR is coming. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the extremely hard work Wormslayer and the team have been doing to get us back down to City 17 and Half-Life 2 VR. The Half-Life VR team, who are not an official Valve team working on an official VR version of Half-Life 2 VR, but instead are a team of developers who have given up their own free time, are retrofitting Half-Life 2 so that we can play it in our rifts and vibes. Now I know to a lot of people this is the holy grail of games, even to this day. 
today. And the benefit of these mods is it is actually the real game, not a reboot or a remake. Which means that once the mod is up, you will be dropped into The City 17 and talking to the exact same characters you will remember from when you first played the game. And if you haven't played the game, then fuck mate, play the game. The Half-Life VR team have put up their teaser trailer you see on screen now of the actual new mod in action. And if you look really, really, really closely, you'll notice a giant motion controlled enabled gravity gun carving shit up. And while some of you would have played this previously on the Oculus DK1 and DK2 Rift headsets, it has been broken and unplayable on the CV1 since its release, which is a damn shame for us and it definitely seems like a cash cow for Valve just waiting to happen and given that Valve has said that they have three full size VR titles in the works I do have to wonder is Half-Life something one of those titles who knows in regards to this VR mod though the team has said the mod will be ready soon a few times now and it has in fact been a while but this time I get the impression they are actually getting close to a release date and I would imagine that they are working hard so it's not an intentional delay, it's just one of those things that takes up a lot of time. But what all this means though is that the motherfucking Mac Daddy of City 17, Mr Gordon Freeman is almost upon us like a horny beakless head crab. so get your rifts and vibes ready. Speaking of VR mods, Robo Recall has copped a pretty sick Star Wars mod courtesy of a user called Tom Monster 31, who apparently received a challenge from a friend to create the mod and finish it within a certain time frame, which ends in a couple of days. Well, props to that friend and props to Tonster. While the mod is not entirely complete, it is close to completion and it is available right now as is. And in its current form, it's plenty of fun and it definitely looks the part. Tonster has gone so far as to design the lightsabers so that they dismember and deflect like a lightsaber should, instead of just acting like a glowing hot rod of destruction. If you want to give this mod a burn, then check the description below for a link and you can go and check that out. I'll also include some simple instructions on how to set that up. And in addition to this mod, the full Robo Recall game received its 360 update, which brings with it the much anticipated 360 degree tracking mode, improved teleporting, bug fixes, and a new song for the credits called Shooty Shooty Gun Hands, which is probably the most relevantly titled song for a game I've ever heard. There is also a handful of other improvements in the update, and you can check the description for a list of those improvements and a link to the update list on the Unreal website. And briefly, there is a small delay on the large medium update. See what I did there with the sizing and the thing with... Uh, this is no biggie to me now though because it's huge how it is. <sighs> Sorry. And even though I'm keen to see this update released because for one, it will include reference images, a redesigned home screen, 2D video, mesh reduction, Oculus avatar integration, and new tutorials, I would rather the team wait a little and get the update right, rather than release a half-baked update and we end up with Oculus Home 1.1 all over again. So yeah, looking forward to that one. Also, the free Ghost in the Shell VR experience hit the Oculus Store last week and it's <sighs> essentially a five minute tour of Scarlett Johansson's PlayStation 2 counterpart kicking some ass in a mid 21st century Japanese boardroom. After watching through this, because that's what you do, you just watch it, I would suggest you go in with some low ass expectations and you'll probably enjoy it. I mean, I didn't hate it, but I definitely expected a lot more. Still, at least as far as quality goes when compared to the Ghost in the Shell movie that just came out, you can't knock them for being inconsistent. Anyways, check the link for the description to find the thing of it. Nah, don't worry about it. Big Screen just had an update that brings a floaty tablet, which enables to use the tablet UI with one hand. The update also fixes some bugs, including crashes and the customized screen showing incorrect monitor information. If you watch the show regularly, you know I love Big Screen, and I'm a huge fan of the Big Screen team and the amount of effort and constant attention to detail they exhibit when putting out updates that clearly show they are listening to the community's feedback. So as 
always a very well implemented update. Steam also has their anniversary sale on and there is a ton of Oculus friendly titles up on the store. I picked up Call of Starseed The Gallery and you'll see titles like Arizona Sunshine and Job Simulator up there too. And I've also put a link in the description that takes you straight to the Oculus Rift compatible titles on the Steam store so you don't have to sift through them all yourself. So go give that a click and get your shop on. Unfortunately though, Onward wasn't on that list, but to be honest, the game is absolutely worth what the dev is charging for it anyway, and he has just released a new update which includes a map called Bazaar. Also a new game mode called Escort, which is where one player is essentially a VIP and you and the team have to escort that person to one of the evac points without the enemy team members killing his ass. This is similar to the safeguard game mode from Call of Duty Black Ops 3, if you've ever played Play that. There is also a bunch of gameplay updates like improvements to the loadout system, added bullet penetration, body armor and grenade damage mechanics and a handful of other things. And the dev is also working on a patch to increase the play count to 5v5. So go check that out on the Steam community website and again I'll chuck a link in the description to that page. And finally John Carmack has posted on Twitter in an extremely nonchalant manner PC is awesome, but the end game of VR is not going to be plugged into a PC. Might as well start working on the hard problems now. Yeah, John, you might as well. Just go on ahead and solve all the difficult shit in your spare time so the rest of the plebs can struggle with the easy stuff. I tell you, if VR ever needed a pivotal person, it's this guy. The post does give you some food for thought though, like what problems will he go to work on first do you think? And what could be the end game of VR exactly? Chips integrated into our eyeballs? A Half-Life 3? <laughs> What do you think could be the end game for VR? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you there. And that's this week in VR on the grid. If you have more you would like to add, then hit me up in the comments below and let's discuss. And if you like this video, then crush that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching today's video. Just remember you can follow me on Twitter at facepalm with a one, not an L. As for here on YouTube, if you like what you find, then like, comment, and subscribe. But don't forget to bring your game face. Face palm out.